Hey guys, welcome back to Quad Nation. And before I say anything else, I just want to say thank you to all the prayer warriors out there. Thank you for your prayers, love, and support. While I had open heart surgery, it truly lifted my spirits, made me feel so much greater, both mentally, physically, and spiritually. So thank you to all the prayer warriors out there. I really, truly mean that genuinely from my heart. You guys are awesome. I am still recovering. I have a little ways to go. Been going through cardiac rehab, but while I'm still down and can't ride, I just wanted to put out some cool videos the best I could anyways as far as like just mods and kind of going over to bikes and stuff soon I'll be back to riding just please be patient and I really do have some really cool stuff coming up soon so let's get right at it let's look at this YFZ 700 double R So what exactly is a YFZ 700R? Well, I'd say by definition, you're probably looking at it. It is a Yamaha Raptor 700R with the stance and profile of a YFZ 450R. As you can see here, this is no stock quad, okay? It doesn't have, the mo it's not the most powerful quad you'll come across, but it's probably the closest thing you'll find to a YFZ 450 stance. This thing is an absolute beast. It's come a long way since being a factory stock bike. But I've added four things to it, which gives it the handling of a 450, but the power of a 700. It is literally a, it, it is a lethal weapon, okay? In the off-road off community, it is a lethal weapon. Now, with these modifications, it is not going to handle the abuse that a YFZ 450 can handle on the track. It's just not. A YFZ 450R is truly the, the weapon for the track. But in this day and age, there's, there's two sport quads being made. So when you go to your local dealership and you walk in and you say, what's my selection? you're going to be looking at a Yamaha Raptor 700R or you're going to be looking at a YFZ 450R. Now there's three types of buyers. There's buyers who go, I want a plush ride, I want mega torque, and I want to ride trails. They go with the 700R. But there's the other side of riders that go, I'm a track guy. I like going, I like flying to the clouds. I love jumping, love doing my supermans, my whips. They're the track guys. They go with the 450Rs. But then the third group of riders is a guy like me. I want the power of the 700, but I want the handling of the 450. And so I've had, as I've had this Raptor over the years, you'll, you'll find your buddies that are on Raptors. They'll eventually sell the Raptor and go with the 450. And then you guys got the, you, there's 450 guys that then will trade theirs for Raptors. So you have, like I said, three types of buyers. And the buyers that are dead set on Raptors and the buyers that are dead set on 450s, it's it's almost like there's this constant rivalry between the two as to which one's better. And it they really two, they, they're really two completely different machines, but we do have to hand it over to the 450 it is more capable in the handling department. The Raptor is more capable in the power department. So, I started thinking, how about I try to make my Raptor a 700 YFZ? Okay, this is probably, I'm probably the only yo-yo on YouTube that is calling their Raptor, first of all, Megatron. <laughs> that I have dubbed him Megatron, but I'm also probably the only yo-yo who has ever thought to call the Raptor a YFC 700 with these modifications. And, and again, 
these modifications are not going to handle on the track like a 450 wheel. So what exactly did I add to the quad to make it a YFZ700 beast? Well, I started with the first mod was the Alba Racing A-Arms. These A-Arms, two inches wider on each side, gave me four inches wider over factory. Then the second mod was these lowering links. Not only does it drop the quad down two inches in the front, but it also pops the tires out an inch on each side more. So now you're going from four plus two. This quad is six inches wider than a stock quad. Now, you'll find yourself seeing on eBay these lowering links. They, it's, it's, it's advised on there that they only work with stock A-arms. That's true. But if you do some minor modifications, you can make it work with aftermarket A-arms, at least the Alba Racing A-arms. The reason they're not compatible is without modifications, the shock spring and the A-arm will rub. Now you can find these lowering links on eBay and there are two types sold. The first one I bought was too wide to fit between these two flanges. So I had to grind it down and by doing so, by grinding it on the forward side, it gave me the clearance to fit between these two flanges, but it also, since I'm grinding on this side, it allowed me to pull the shock forward, which then gave me the clearance for the spring in the A-arm. Now, when I bought these originally, on the other one I accidentally grinded it on this side, which pushed the spring even further into the A-arm. So I had to buy a second set. What I didn't know is on eBay from these Chinese dealers, there's two types of links. You would think they would all be the same spec, but they're not. The one with the hex head is the one that is too fat and you have to grind it to make it fit, which is great as long as you grind it on the forward side, allow the shock to move forward. That's the only modification needed. When I ordered my second set, it came with a hex head on this side and an Allen, uh, excuse me, I used the same bolts from both. The, the bolt that came with the second set was a round head with an Allen, uh, with an Allen fitting, okay? With that brand, which it, didn't, it wasn't even a brand name, it come from China, but with the second set from the, the second uh, seller that I bought from, this clamp actually fit in here, but again, the clearance wasn't there. And as you can see, it rubbed a little bit of the paint off my A-arm. So what I did was you still grind it, okay? You can move it forward. And then since it's gonna be, since it originally fit between these two flanges, uh, I can't even remember if I said or not, but this second set that I bought, was actually within spec and slid right between the two flanges, okay? So in order to move this one forward, you still have to grind the side, but then you can add, since it'll be basically too skinny in there, you can add washers on this side, which then makes it tight in here and your shock has moved forward. So both types work, just depends on if you're gonna buy the one with the Allen head or with the hex head. Either way, you know how to make these work and what you ultimately get is this super nasty stance, okay? It's 51 inches wide up front, and then what I did is I added the lowering link on the shock here, and the back, which I'll have to show you from the underside, it lowered the quad down, really made it nice. Now what you'll find in the back is I used wheel spacers in the back. Now. Some folks will use wheel spacers on the front to push their wheels out even more, but what happens is you get a lot of torsion because the front hubs aren't designed for that extra, le extra leverage. So, wheel spacers up front, no good. You'll wear your bearings out quickly. Wheel spacers in the back, completely fine because the axle hub can handle it, okay? So, wheel spacers in the back, perfectly fine. The ones I bought, I did not want to go with Chinese brands. I wanted to go with something more reliable and strong, being that I do do a lot of drag raising and popping the clutch. So I went and purchased 
Alba Racing wheel spacers, two inches wide for each side, which popped the rear out a total of four inches. And then the final mod was the lowering link on the rear shock, which then dropped the quad up to four inches. I dropped it three inches and I dropped the front two and a half inches. So that's the four mods. Alba Racing A-arms, lowering links, rear wheel spacers, and the rear shock lowering link. That's how you get this thing to drop down nearly three inches all the way around, four if you really wanted to, but that's how you get the super nasty stance. I mean, the stance is just out of this world, guys. Super cool. I hope you understand how I made those work. If you need clarification, I can put out a video of um, how to do it, a really in-depth video. I'll take my shocks back off and I'll show you guys exactly how to do it. You know I'm all about that, all about helping people. So with that being said, this is what I think is the closest thing to being dubbed a YFZ 700R. It is literally a beast. It is literally a perfect machine from factory, but when you add these mods, guys, I'm telling you, you have to do it. It is unreal. I mean, look at the stance. I mean, it just looks, it's, it's, it's wide. It's just, it's low, it's wide, it's sexy. I love it. So thank you for putting up with me. I know I'm long-winded. I was really excited to show you guys this. I can't wait to get back to riding. As you know, I still have a few weeks to go because I can't risk falling off or doing something stupid, rolling off, splitting my sternum back open since it is still heal healing. But this is the setup now. I got a super cool Banshee video coming up. Did I get a second Banshee or did the Banshee get a facelift? You guys will find out very soon. And I'm also gonna be coming out with more tutorial videos on shifting. So those of you interested in any of that, be looking out for coordination videos. And for now guys, I love you all. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. This is Quad Nation 929. I'm out.